So last week it was brought to my attention that my banjo tutorial on Home on the Range, I had a pretty major problem. Uh, the banjo wasn't in tune. Now it was in tune with itself, but it was out of sync with the electronic tuner. Now, so this time I have the banjo tuned with the electronic tuner. What I do is I use the electronic tuner to get in key so I can play with other instruments and then I just tune the banjo to itself after that, and that produces what I like to call an aged tuning. In other words, it's not really in tune, but it, I like the sound of it. And actually, when I get it back in tune, it kind of bothers me. Uh, uh, I guess the equal temperament or 440 or some 440 hertz or something like that. Um, so anyway, this time it's in tune. And the first thing I think about with any song is what key it's in. If you're playing in a jam, someone will announce the key. They'll say, this is key of G, or this is one sharp, or something like that. If you're playing by listening to a recording, uh, then you need to find out what key it's in. And the way I do that is I just go up a particular string till I find a note that's actually being hit. You know, one of the major notes, maybe, maybe not. But I find a note, and oh, that note's being hit. And then I go, you know, you know, around till I find, you know, other notes in the scale. Uh, and then I may attempt to do a chord. That doesn't sound right. That sounds better. Or it could be, see, because I'm using it. I'm using different chord shapes to figure this out. So like I'll use my F shape. That, that just doesn't sound right. So then I'll try like a D shape. That, that could work or, you know, uh, and then other chords, you'll eventually uh, determine what key it's in. And typically whatever chord it ends on is whatever key it's in. Uh, there are some exceptions to that, where it has an unresolved ending. It should be. That was clearly what that resolves to. Uh, and that's common in certain uh, songs, and it gives a nice touch to them. But Home on the Range doesn't have any of that. It's a very simple. It's key of C. So once I find out what key it's in, I know what chords typically are in the key of C, and chords are the next thing I focus on. In Home on the Range, to do it right, you need seven chords, maybe eight. Uh, technically, you can do it with three, but that's the stale version of Home on the Range. It's like having a peanut butter sandwich when you could have a hamburger. So the chords that I use for Home on the Range are C major, F major, F minor, D7, G, and I like drawing G7, A minor, those are our chords. There might also be a C7 in there. But when I'm actually playing the tune, I don't use it. So then what you do is you just uh, you just back up with those chords. You back up the song, and I'll explain that in a moment. But first, I haven't told you how to play the chords. It's a little bit about terminology. With banjo strings, 
we call the string closest to the ground, the first string. Then as you go toward the sky, you have second, third, fourth, and fifth. If you don't have that fifth string, this tutorial is not for you. You have a uh, tenor or plectrum banjo, and they're played differently. Uh, it, it, they're four string banjos, and there's a, there's, there's a big difference. And historically, there may have been, you know, some people preferred one or the other. I like the sound of both. The tuning I'm in is C tuning. And that one, if we go from fifth to first, from the sky to the ground, that's a G, a C, a G, a B, and a D. That's your tuning. And that doesn't really work unless you have the C chord. And now if we get to chords, how you do the C chord, and this time I'll go first to fifth, because that's the way I think in terms of chords. Uh, so if the C chord, on the first string you have one on the second fret. As you go toward the sky, your second string you have one on the first fret. So first, second, second, first, and the rest are open. In other words, we strum them, but we uh, don't put any fingers on them. This is opposed to muted where you're not playing a particular string. So you have your C major, first, second, second, first. Uh, and, I'm not, and I'm not telling you which fingers to use for that, because depending on the context, it's really whatever fingers are there at the moment. However, one thing I find very helpful in backup is to use my index finger on the second string first fret, that will come in handy when we're switching from a C to an F. Now F is our next chord. So we have our C, our next chord is F. And going first to fifth, it's three, one, two. And of course that's open. The fifth string isn't really part of the chord. Uh, but don't worry about that too much right now. Okay, so now we have F minor. And to change F major to F minor, all you do is you take the, the third string and you just move it from a 2 to a 1. So we're going toward the head 1. But if you just move your finger back, this creates strain on your wrist, and it's not an ergonomic position, not a good position to be in. So what I'd recommend doing instead is using that index finger and just barring the first fret with it. Except don't bar this last string, the thick, the fourth string, because that's a, uh, what is that? like a D flat, except my, it, it's a D flat major 7. Okay, so back to business. You don't want a D flat major 7th, you want an F minor. And so all you have to do is take the index finger and just have it stop at the third string. In other words, don't bar the fourth string. In other words, the fourth string is played open. The fifth string really gets in the way of this point. But you know that it adds the ambiance when you're playing. All right, and then the next chord's a D seventh. And for that, it's very similar to our F, except top string is the first string, a string closer to the ground, open, first fret, second, second string, first fret, third string, second fret, fourth string, second fret. Then we have our G major, and that's very easy. All you do is place one finger on the fourth string, second fret. 
Now G7, uh, all you do is you move that finger up to the fifth fret. But if you're backing up and you really want that seventh to stand out, I would recommend instead doing on the first string, putting one on the third fret. And I also prefer on the first on the second string to put one on the third fret, though that's not necessary. It gives it a the seventh where it stands out. If you don't if you leave the second string open, that that's fine too. But it's a little bit more diminished sounding. This one really it kind of this one's stronger, I guess. So those are your chords, and then let's get to the A minor. The A minor is just like the C and just like the D seventh, basically. So just going from the ground on first string up, we have two first string second fret, second string first fret, third string second fret, and then open fourth string. If you really want to torture yourself, you can use your pinky and do a fourth fret on the fourth string. That has a cleaner sound to it. It's a little bit better, in my opinion. Versus... That just gives it a little bit muddier. Uh, but don't torture yourself. You could also, obviously, do the A minor up here. You're still... That's still pretty miserable, though. Probably the easiest place to do it is way up there but for our purposes we're doing it down here and don't and, and it's, it's, it's gonna be fine so don't worry about torturing yourself just leave that fourth string open that is technically part of the A minor chord it's the muddiest sounding uh, version you can do but it gets the job done okay and those are our chords you have C which going to, and I'm, I'm gonna name them all from ground up so two one zero zero F ground up three one two zero F minor three one one zero D seventh zero one two two G zero 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 two G seventh zero 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 five or three three zero two or three zero zero two and then finally A minor two one two zero or two, one, two, four, if you want to torture yourself or you have amazing fingers. All right, so those are our chords. So then the next step is to just back up with a song. If you don't have this, if you don't have a recording and you're just doing it by memory, just sing. Oh, give me a hope where the buffalo flow. I'll do it that, except I'll just call out the chords. C. C, 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 C. song there's another C we're going to use which that's first string fifth fret second string fifth fret and the rest can be open and so going from ground up that's five five one uh, that's five five zero zero and that's just useful to where you take that and you slide those down three three zero zero Okay, so the, and then you just sing along with those chords. Now, 
if you're just starting out, my recommendation is use the slowdown feature on YouTube. So in the little playback bar, you have a triangle button, and right now it's two sticks. That's your play pause button. There's this red bar with the white circle. That's how far through the video you, you go. And then there's this gear, okay? If you click on that gear, this menu comes up and blocks part of the video, uh, or all the video if you are mobile. So, and it has different things. One of them is playback speed, and it's normal. And if you set that to 0 0.25, it slows it down to a quarter speed. You set it to 0 0.5, half speed, 0 0.75, three quarters. Normal, it's just normal playback, and then you can speed it up. If the person's, you know, if I'm too slow talking, if, if you're impatient, you can speed it up. But if if you're backing up a song, you might want to just start out with it on 0.25 speed. And if you're not used to the chords, then you're gonna be fumbling around a lot. You'll get used to it eventually. Uh, a few techniques for changing chords. Try to keep a hold of common notes. So like with my C, I have to go from a C to an F. So what I do is I keep my index finger on a second string first fret. And then just move the others, holding this one still, not lifting it. If you lift it, then you're going to fumble around even more. It gives me an anchor point to reference. F minor, I... Now my anchor points become my pinky on the third fret. Or I do that. Uh, and then from F minor, we're going to a D7. No, no, we're going back to a C. So that's easy. I I just my my index finger returns from the bar to, to just going straight. I'm mean, to just fretting this the second string. And then D seventh, all I do is I just swing it over. I leave my pinky in place, and then I, I the way I do it is my ring fing, my middle finger on the fourth string, second fret, and then my ring finger on the third string, second fret. And so that's really easy to transition back and forth that way because I have this pivot. I'm pivoting. And then from there I go to a G. All I do is I lift my index and ring finger off and leave my middle finger on the fourth string. And there's your G. And then I just slide it up with a seven. Or alternately I place my uh, pinky and ring finger down on the top string. That's a little bit more of a stretch. And that's pretty much it. Uh, a minor, again, just using that pivot point from C. All I do is I just place my middle finger on the second on the third string, second fret. And then from there to go to D7, I just hop those two over. And you can see basically I'm just I'm just pivoting. That's all I'm doing to switch between chords. It's easier that way. Uh, the one exception is when I slide up here. Uh, but in that case, I'm keeping my fingers on the same strings. I'm not lifting them off. I'm just sliding them up. Okay, so then from there you can pick out the tune, keeping the chords in mind. So... to stay with my chord shapes to do that even though I I could just do the notes because that way I have a reference point but we'll just go through each note think of it in terms of the chord shape so we have our C shape or, and we start with a third string and we lift off on the first so we go third string twice and then we go to the second string then we do the first string only it's open we're lifting off then we put it back down again. And then we go up a string to the second string. And then we lift that off. All the while staying in our C shape. Now we're switching to our F shape. So we do our F shape. And that's third string. And we go to first string. 
F minor shape, still on first string. Then C shape, first string. F shape. Or just we were doing third fret. Then second C shape up here, that's going to be fi a five on the first string. Then back down to a one on the second string. And now we're going to a D seventh shape. Lifting off on the second string, back on, open first string because it's G shape. Then I like doing the seventh, and then repeat C shape third string, second string, open first, close first, second, open second, F, and that's third string. All right, and first string, F minor. C shape, open, second string, G shape, second string, one on the second string, open first, and one on the second string is a C shape. All right, and then just like that. So then you can play the chords with, just, just play the chords just lifting off the fingers for the tune. Instead of just playing the whole chord all the time, you use a roll pattern. What that is is you is arpeggio is what uh, the technical term is, and you just pick a note uh, with. And typically, how it works on the banjo is it's some combination of thumb, index, middle finger. So you might do thumb on fifth string, index does a string, and then middle does the next. So it could be thumb two uh, five two one. Could be five three two. Or five four one or five four two five four five four one or five four two. You know, just all sorts of combinations. You could do fancier things. There's a forward reverse roll where that could be like a three with a thumb, two with the index, five with the thumb, and then one with the middle finger. What I find the most useful for home on the range is forward and reverse rolls. So forward rolls, that's where it's starting with your thumb, you do your thumb, then your index, then your middle. Uh, a reverse roll, that's going to be your middle, index, and thumb, or it could be thumb, middle, index. Just the direction your hand's moving, in other words. And together, that's called a forward reverse roll. But I... It just, and so you just use those in, instead of pointing forward, you do a roll. Like that, so. And the way I do it is I'm going to throw the fifth string. I do two or three. So you have the, what I do is a pair of forward rolls where I'm doing five open, second with the first fret, first with the second fret, then the same thing except five open, second with the third fret, first with the third fret, then flex the chord, the original C chord. And that's a nice embellishment on the end. The other thing I like to do is 
play one of those notes using just my uh, left hand. Obviously, if you're left-handed, you have a different banjo with a different cut, or the neck's on the other way, and you'd be doing it with your right hand. But for left, for right-handed people like myself, just playing that with the left hand, so this finger can do other things. Like that. It's just that's easier for me than doing so that. I mean, it's not much harder, but it's just more instinctive for me. Something to keep in mind. Certainly not essential. So then, so that's that's the major embellishment. Throwing a seventh in is another embellishment. Now, some people would consider throwing the F minor in embellishment. I wouldn't. I consider that essential. You could technically back up home on the range using just C, F, and G. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo moan and the deer grin and a low play. Where never is heard a discouraging moan and the sky is all cloudy all day. But that just doesn't, that just isn't, that's like the peanut butter sandwich version the stale bread peanut butter sandwich version, when you could use the hamburger or pizza version. It's just much more expressive. Okay, so moving on. Uh, so yeah, the, in the chorus, I go up here, and that's just a forward roll. Maybe a little reverse action. I just like plucking those together. You could do, do them separately. I find it easier to pluck. I throw in another embellishment there. That's first string, third fret. And then I there's where my A minor. And I do a pinch there instead of a roll. do it. If questions, comments, tunings, all that, leave them in the comments section. All right, thanks.